You can't find your way in the dark unless you already know where you're trying to go. In this video and another episode of the Dark Web documentary series, gentle reminder, this is an artistic, historic, educational, and scientific capture of some of the strange shenanigans that could happen in the dark web, the deep web, the dark net, whatever you want to call it, Tor hidden services, the corners and crevices of the internet. And in this video, I would like to shine a spotlight on one of those resources that you can use to find your way around and to see what is open online and available within these Tor hidden services. So let's dive in. All right, I am inside of my Hoonix virtual machine and I'm using the Tor browser, as you can see. And if folks aren't familiar, you can go to this website called dark.fail. Now note, dark.fail is a clear net domain. It's noted on the regular internet, right? Not strictly with a dot onion Tor hidden service or onion site. It, they explain it's not recommended to view our site here. Domain names are not as secure as Tor hidden services. Use the Tor browser and visit us at our onion site instead. Now, if you are using Tor, you might notice in the upper right hand corner, they do actually have a nice little notification. An onion site is available. If you click on this, it will bring you over to this specific URL, which is the same one referenced just here. And that is how you could jump in. It does still tell me, hey, I am on the clear net. However, I believe using this onion domain as I should be, I am browsing through this through Tor. So A-OK. -okay. And here's an explanation here. It says Tor is the uncensored internet. You can use the Tor browser to explore it and set this page as the home page that you might use to save time. You can verify links with PGP keys and they are not clickable for your own safety. You kind of have to copy and paste as needed. The Dark Fails philosophy and finances sections are down below if you have an interest. And this is exactly the philosophy I would like to showcase. This is always a fast one server request without any tracking, no JavaScript. It's just this HTML spat out right back to your client. You can accurately verify URLs with PGP. You can avoid the direct links to protect against DNS leaks. And you will end up using this knowledge of this onion site uptime is really important for a whole lot of cybersecurity researchers. The site is provided for only the use of information. This doesn't include any endorsements or any implied opinions or input on any of the sites or any organizations mentioned. It is just simply a listing. And that is how it goes about its way. Now, this is a super cool resource if you aren't familiar with it because it could give you a little bit more access into other potential dark web or dot onion or Tor hidden services websites that might be worthwhile. We'll have to go ahead and explore some of these. Darknet Live is certainly a worthwhile one and Dread just another. If you aren't familiar with Dread, that is what I'd love to showcase in this, in this video, but I do wanna simply quickly list a couple of these other options here. There's a Tor Marketplace, Hydra of course, Course, and the exploit.in forum, pretty notorious for hacker for hire, malware for sale, etc. Other cybercrime groups chatting all about. Uh, Wanna buy RDP access, marketplaces where you could get contact with initial access brokers, those who have already exploited or compromised an organization and are just handing out or selling access to it to make their own money. But some of those spooky, you know, shenanigans of, of hackers doing what they do. Crypto stamps, Hex ACAB phones, ones that I'm not all too familiar with, but I do want to include in the listing here. And we can, of course, go explore some of these if we'd like. Some of them you might be familiar with, and they just have their own regular dark web or onion site link rather than, okay, using their clearnet address. And I think we'll actually go see some of these, like the original Tor page, Blockchair, which you might be using to trace other blockchain transactions. Of course, DuckDuckGo, Facebook with an old V2 address, or no, that's a V3 address it looks like, but it is offline currently, and others. So there's a lot you can explore here, but let's start the conversation by jumping into Dread, if that's A-OK. -okay. If folks aren't familiar, Dread, at least from my understanding, is an online sort of Reddit-like forum bulletin board for exploring and understanding what is happening within the Tor Hidden Services. There's a whole lot of interesting conversations that are happening in here just about all the time, and they have different sections or subreddits that are, you know, specific to what they might be chatting about. Uh, there are, of course, conversations that get into a little bit more of the shady gray line, right, of selling 
illicit material or uh, offering substances that might not normally be uh, kosher, right? Uh, so some of that is, is certainly, of course, uh, a part of the conversation here. And you can see some of that can be present. I don't really know how much more to explain or say about that. It's it's things that you'll end up kind of seeing here if you explore and lurk around. Uh, I'll click on just a few of these because I think this is actually kind of pertinent as to the video itself here. Uh, be aware, that one of these posts here, be aware that what you post here may show up as posted on the clearnet. Now this could kind of be specifically uh, addressing me. However, this is at a clearnet address and a website that looks to be sharing all of the posts and all the information here on Dread, also on the clearnet site. And they say, here's the link. Best bet going forward is to think of Dread as Reddit minus the bans. Everyone can view it, Right. And there's conversations here all within the OPSEC subreddit under this dread reddit here. Uh, so the forward slash D to denote a specific hide. Uh, if you want to get a little bit more information on how you might protect your OPSEC or operational security as you poke around and explore the darknet, obviously I am not a good example of this, but uh, here's some of the conversations that come from this. Uh, some folks saying, look, this is a disaster for OPSEC. This kind of mainstream exposure will lead to no good. I wonder if it can be stopped. I, look, I, I come out here uh, just to show this to you. I'm not by any means making taking a stance or making a statement one way or the other. Uh, obviously, I am wanting to share this for the sake of education and information in a publicly accessible place. But there's conversations on that conversation, right? Creators of this .com site are scraping dread and posting the results on ClearNet. Horrendous OPSEC breach of major proportions. Everything that someone posts here could be viewable on ClearNet for law enforcement or anyone else to see. And this individual comes in and says, but everything posted on here is already visible to law enforcement and everyone else, regardless of that site, right? Because we were just able to go access this. I just went to the link. Uh, if you go explore it, you might need to work through a, a simple queue, or like a waiting line of, hey, it'll give you three minutes to get into Dread, and then you'll have to go through and specify a unique number or letter for every single portion of a, of a code or a pin number, just like a CAPTCHA, right? And they explain, look, I just don't want to be in Google's cache index, right? That's a bigger audience. And understandably so, obviously this working through Tor and working through in the dark web dot onion websites gives you a certain amount more anonymity or at least a, a, a shrinking the audience of who could potentially want to go access it. But some folks are saying like, look, man, there's already so much out there. You, you may very well just be using a VPN and, and DuckDuckGo and hoping yourself here. Uh, and then, <laughs> you know, they do that. I don't know. You you have to have your own risk assessment. You have to know your own threat model. You have to be cognizant of what you're exploring and jumping around and doing over on those Onion websites. Uh, but obviously, this, it is a conversation. It is something that folks will discuss. And whether you are noting your privacy or your security or your operational security, uh, that's that. This is a new one. Looks like this post was actually created three minutes ago. Cafe Dread is run by the Dread user Linkpin. I believe he's got permissions from Paris and uses the Dread API. People need to understand that any entity can view your posts even if they're not on the clearnet. If your OPSEC relies on the content you post not being on the clearnet, I've got bad news for you. Obviously, law enforcement is going to be regular scraping Dread and keep a record of the content that you post. And like, that's, if I may... That's what we're kind of showcasing and discussing here. And that, like, look, you can just kind of bump around. Like, we can just, you can just as easily get on the specific dark web or Tor hidden website and, and go explore these and learn them because there is a bridge, right? I went from dark.fail, which is a clearnet website, to the onion address to see the links to get into Dread. Um, and I, not taking a stance, not making a statement, just exploring fascinating conversations here and just things for your awareness uh there's an faq Ooh, let's go see what this is how does score work on dread obviously very much reddit like etc 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 sub dread there is a link down here what is dread and that might be worthwhile here 
I think that's kind of cool. Dread is an onion-based free speech platform and forum where you can post, comment, and share among tons of different communities. Developed with both privacy and usability in mind, choosing to stick to a common user interface to the match the likes of Reddit, but without added security issues that are involved with the use of JavaScript or client-side browser code. Developed in early 2018, and the platform was redeveloped to be a lot more stable and brought together. Initially, I had planned this to be around darknet markets because I think this was grown out of a little bit of a, of a cluster that was interested in, okay, those underground marketplaces. Uh, we provide a hub for harm reduction to many aspects of deep web and dark web purchases, including but not limited to security reports and safe drug use information. So again, bear in mind, it's some of those conversations on uh, marketplace sales, right? So I wanted to bring this to your attention. I wanted you to get eyes on Dread. I wanted you to get eyes on dark.fail and its equivalent V3 onion address. We can use this as another reference point bouncing off to explore more and just bring you more uh, eyes on this and demystify what we might be tracking down in the dark web. Needless to say, it can get into some strange, sketchy stuff, uh, but hey, we've got a strong stomach for if we run into anything weird, and uh, we are just going on the safari ride. We are seeing what there is to see as part of this dark web documentary, especially just for spreading the awareness and offering that information to you. So keep that in mind. Again, I've said it repeatedly and I will continue to, just like what you see in that dark.fail philosophy, I want to bring this out with no association or obviously opinion or impact or input on any of those. No statement, no stance. It's just a thing I want to bring to you. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Hope you're enjoying this. Hope you're enjoying these videos. I'll see you in the next video. I love you. Take care.